Hello, this is Julie Podowitz. Welcome to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. Today, I welcome Lori Wimmer to the show. Lori, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Lori and I met recently, and I forget how we met Lori. I, I saw, I think I saw something on LinkedIn. It really intrigued me. Lori is the founder and CEO of Simplified HR. Lori, tell, I, I love, you know, women in leadership and, and entrepreneurship um, starting Grow Your Occupancy a couple of years ago. Tell us a little bit about Simplified HR and how you got into owning your own business. Awesome. I would be happy to. So Simplified HR essentially is the brainchild of me discovering that there was a, a large gap in a, a lot of small to medium sized businesses um, to support their HR team. So I come from a background of over 20 years in HR in corporate America. And uh, I worked with a lot of businesses across the United States, helping build teams, um, you know, building branch locations from an internal team, and then supporting a lot of our clients with recruiting efforts. And um, about two years ago, I actually joined um, forces with a, another small business and provided a lot of coaching support. So I was really an HR expert. Um, it allowed me the opportunity to really just support small businesses with some advice and, you know, consultative type of measures. And I realized that I could provide them a lot of training and I could give them a lot of information, but the time to actually implement was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, they could, you know, and we're all probably the same. We, we probably all have the same problems as visionaries of our business. We have all these grandiose ideas, but being able to actually put it to, to, um, to work and make it work for you is just difficult because there's not enough hours in the day. So that's where I decided to launch Simplified HR, which is essentially a recruiting and HR fractional business where we will support businesses and anything HR related, but um, truly, you know, tailored to a lot of the recruiting support. It's well, we, and, and <laughs> thank you very much. And when did you start Simplified HR? So I officially started it um, around August of 2022. And oh, okay. um, so yes, I've been around for a little bit, but it, that was, you know, really more of a part-time. It wasn't a, I didn't really go full-time. I didn't go all in. I kind of had that fear of, should I, should I really let the full-time career go? Should I go all in on this business? And um, it was actually this year, the summer of this year that I decided it was time. There's just, there's a high demand. Um, this is where I think I can be most resourceful and supportive and helping others. So I decided in the summer of this year to go ahead and release the, the being an employee for somebody else and join the, the reins of entrepreneurship full time. So for a while, you balanced a full time job and this business. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's the fear. It, it, you know, it is jumping off a cliff, starting your own business mm. and <laughs> you know, leaving, a, leaving that paycheck, that secured paycheck. What advice would you give anyone thinking about, you know, maybe leaving corporate America or starting their own business or, or pursuing a passion? What, what have you learned? Oh my goodness. You know? I think the best thing to do is just do it, right? I think that you just have to do it when it's something that you're very passionate about and it's something that drives you and you know that it motivates you. I think for me, after many years in that corporate America role, um, you know, I, I did feel a little bit of like the, the spark wasn't there that it once was. You know, I love to have the interaction with business owners and be able to share my knowledge with them and watch them grow. And that was something that I was really missing from that corporate role because it was, um, you know, a lot of repeat customers. There wasn't a lot of, of new activity. It was the way things had always been. This gave me an opportunity to really use my visionary skills and to be able to really say, this is exactly what, what I want to do for my future. And this is what drives me to get up in the morning. Um, you know, I'm excited when one of my clients comes to me and they say, oh my gosh, this new hire is doing phenomenal. They I actually had one not long ago that said, um, the employee had been with her for about a month that we hired, and she said she has more than tripled her salary. So she is getting that return on the investment within that first month. And it was just simply getting the right person in the right spot mm -hmm. and then holding them accountable. So I helped them set up, you know, some KPIs for their role, their key performance indicators to make sure that they were performing to the level that the company needed. Um, I think a lot of times, and this is something I've seen for many years, large corporations, small businesses, they're all, um, you know, somewhat a victim of this, that they just want to get a body in the spot. 
to say that the position's filled. And I think that is a really, really, it can be a detrimental um, hire, you know, it could really cost a lot of money for the company. And yeah. so it's my duty as the partner for these businesses to say, let's get the right person that's going to perform. Let's get the right person who's going to actually fulfill the needs and get you the return on the investment that you need in that person. So Lori, I, we are focused primarily or grow your occupancy in the senior living space and, but certainly sales marketing for any company. The, in senior living, and I'm sure this is a case for many, many businesses, verticals is, is staffing, right? And right. like you said, not finding is it's you have open positions very stressful and period. When it's stressful when you're taking care of people and you're open 24 hours a day and 365 days a year, and it's not it, it's people's lives, right? So it's incredibly, incredibly critical to uh get positions filled. But what, a couple of things that I, I liked hearing you say, I took notes is that not only do you have, use your expertise around hiring and finding hopefully the right, quote unquote, the person that fits the role best will be successful, but puts KPIs in place. I often hear, you know, how is that person doing? Well, I really like her mm -hmm. or well, you know, yeah, doing good, doing good. And, and we fail to so oftentimes put very specific KPIs, very specific metrics to measure progress and then go back to, to have conversations around very specific outcomes. We right. have a job description, uh, maybe the skill sets, you know, necessary, maybe education necessary. Then it's oftentimes stops there. What advice would you give, and and can you give an example of maybe some KPIs that you have helped implement or or suggest? Absolutely, I would love to. So I am a uh, big supporter of having good boundaries for your new hires and for your team in general. And I think that um, you know one of the the hardest things coming into a business that does not already track KPIs, and they do a lot of their leadership based on emotion, feelings, you know, they're not really tracking the numbers as, as closely as they could, mm -hmm. um, is the very first thing I would say is to just start tracking, right? It's not even necessarily about hitting goals or meeting certain criteria in that role, but the yeah. tracking piece of it in, in general is so critical. Mm -hmm. And, um, for example, you know, I have a client that just recently I started partnering with, we started to evaluate their social media, social media in general, that again, this is, you know, not a, a, a critical position in the sense of maybe an RN or a CNA, things of that nature, but still a very valuable piece of, of the, the business equation. And she really liked the team. She really liked the person doing social media. She knew even some family things that had gone on. There's a lot of emotional things that get put back at us. And I am very sensitive to those types of things. And I think that uh, that's probably what has led me to stay in human resources for so long. But you do, you know, it was really necessary for us to be able to say how much activity is actually being performed in this role and what are the results? So not necessarily number of posts that the person's putting out on social media, but more what's the growth of our social media platform? Are we seeing an increase in engagement? Are we seeing an increase in followers? Um, so those KPIs were the pieces that we put in place very quickly. And it very, very quickly identified that we had some serious issues, that activity was not resulting in any sort of increase in engagement. Um, we were not using any call to actions. There were just a lot of different pieces that were missing because when we hired that individual, we weren't the social media expert. We were hiring somebody to be that person. And a lot of times with small to medium-sized businesses, we are hiring someone for their expertise. Right. Sure. Um, but that is, um, and I think that is probably a critical piece is that we need to make sure we know what to measure success on for those roles. So um, that is one piece of it. I think, goodness, every single position in the company, whether it's from the CEO down to every entry level position should have some level of KPIs to track their success. And when things don't go the way that you expect them to, that gives you some metrics to be able to say, these are the trends that we're seeing. This is the activity. And you right. can start to set goals from there as well. Yeah. And I like that you pointed out it's, 
you know, the activity and then the result. Yes. Right? So we oftentimes, again, focus on, oh, X number in this case, a post a day or three posts a day, the activity, yes. but what is it that you're need, you wanting to gain or what does a company need as an outcome and work backward from there? And that way you're having a conversation around, it's it's an unemotional conversation. It's around statistics and, and outcomes rather than you're not doing a good job or you need right. to do better or right. you need to engage and use these sort of uh, nebulous sort of vague comments. It's like saying, you know, you need to be try harder <laughs> or right. need in more. It's like, well, <laughs> just exactly. do better. Yeah, just do better. And then be, to be able to tie the, tie them together, you know, right. when this, then this. Exactly. As much as you can, right? Absolutely. As as you can. Yeah. Um, what about what, like just staffing in general, can, can you talk us, talk me through sort of, uh, how to keep that pipeline strong, you know, for, for companies of any size that, you know, there's turnover forward facing positions, much customer facing, uh, a, how do you keep the pipeline full mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, of potential talent? What tips might you have to intrigue people mm-hmm. to entice them to learn more? Exactly. And then retention, you know, we talk about turnover and sometimes turnover we need to have it because perhaps we are not, we didn't get the right person on the bus, but the retention of great talent is critical, right? For any business Absolutely. success. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, I, I encourage my clients to always keep that pipeline growing. So always have the application process open, especially if you have positions that are, are, are pretty high turnover. Um, you know, if we're looking at a dietary position or a janitorial position, which tend to have pretty high turnover, right? Um, those are positions I would consistently be recruiting for. Um, so I encourage my clients to make sure their website has an open application process where you can go ahead and apply and select the type of opportunity that you might be interested in being considered for so that you have that pipeline to go back and refer to at any time. I also do, and in referring to social media, I encourage a lot of engagement with social media um, to keep the pipeline growing. So whether it be a post a week, uh, post every other week, whatever seems most relevant for the business size, but the social media team, you know, can promote we're always hiring. We are consistently looking for great A players to join our team, um, you know, and really highlighting the aspects that are beneficial to joining the team, whether that be fantastic benefits, um, flexible scheduling, offering scheduling for, for somebody in the evening hours that just wants part-time. So being really, really specific about how can we be flexible to get the candidates to want to work here? Um, you know, as much as we want we believe everybody there's the, everybody wants to work here. Reality is not everybody wants this specific type of position. And we really want to make sure we're grabbing that person's attention. So incorporating all avenues possible, social media, having that open application process, and then following up very promptly on each one of those applicants. That's another key element. um, In my opinion is that we have a lot of clients who may put postings out and then they realize that, Oh, I've had 10 applicants apply last week and I haven't responded back to them. And the shelf life, for lack of a better word, of a new candidate is very short. If they are actively looking for work and if they're good, they will be gone very quickly. So ensuring that there's a quick follow-up. And if you currently don't have an opening, but they just applied and, you know, they may be a good fit for down the road, having that candid conversation that right now we really don't have an immediate opening, but I'm going to definitely keep your information handy. So as soon as we have another opportunity, we can reach back out to you. So you, you mentioned flexible schedules, uh, mm-hmm. potentially maybe part-time, full-time uh, benefits, certainly. What else are you seeing that's really important to candidates today? So I, the flexibility is definitely the most important, I think, for, for most candidates, more so even than pay. Pay is definitely a key, key okay. driving force. But um, I think the the ability to work under their terms, right? That's the workforce that we're faced with right now. And whether that means being off every weekend, which doesn't sound ideal, if you can make that work to your benefit with the business, then make, you know, making that happen. 
there are a lot of people that just want to work on the weekend. So maybe increasing the shift time and just doing a three day uh, long weekend shift. So um, that is probably the most critical. And then um, to kind of piggyback on that, to go back to your question on retention, the number one with every new client that I get, I will have meetings with all of, of the team members. The number one piece of feedback that I receive is communication. That if they're if they have some areas for improvement, it's not that I need to make more money. The environment's too dirty. Um, the shift is is you know an odd hour. It's I don't really get a lot of feedback or I don't get a lot of great communication from okay. my manager. Interesting. So. Boy, good advice. Uh, it sounds like the fundamentals or the basics, people don't like those words that they want to, <laughs> what's new, what's exciting, but those fundamentals of communication and well, follow up, follow through. I appreciate that too. Yeah. Someone's reaching out. You got to reach back out quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, communication as far as everything, verbal, written, what to expect, mm -hmm. what how they're doing, uh, just evaluations, every, just evaluations. Yeah. A lot of times companies think that an evaluation should be a once a year. Um, you know, that's just the trend in corporate America. That's typically the trend, but in many businesses, it needs to be more frequent. It needs to be sure. maybe quarterly. Yeah. And um, I highly encourage a quarterly evaluation to be able to say, these are the things you're doing great in. These are the things that we need some improvement on so that there's not just a once a year where you're focused on that one little time frame, we want to really, you know, have a consistent feedback process. And then team meetings, team meetings for years. I, I again, I was the a leader in a region. I had team meetings. We would get together and it would last an hour, sometimes two hours. And the results from that meeting were not as effective as they could have been. And um, I learned after quite a bit of training that I've taken myself as well, that a 30 minute meeting that, or even a 15 minute huddle every day, a 30 yeah. minute meeting that's at once a week to go over your metrics, go over the numbers, the KPIs, what are the big things we're working on? Does anybody need support? That, that piece of communication will help keep everybody connected much better than an hour or two hour long meeting once a week that has not a lot, not a really good agenda. Right. No meeting should be more than an hour period ever. Right. <laughs> uh, because you can make very purposeful 15 minutes. They need to be 15 minutes if they're that, if they're daily. Absolutely. Uh, in our business, we, we see stand-ups as they called or huddles. It lasts an hour every day. It's way too long, way too long. Absolutely. And it's not purposeful, like you said, and have KPIs. That's what I'm hearing you say. KPIs. What, why are you meeting? And exactly. why are you meeting? Because you're supposed to meet every day. You know, it should be really purposeful and, and, People do appreciate communication. I hear oftentimes, Lori, um, I don't want to be micromanaged. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be micromanaged. I, I, I sort of feel like that's oversaid, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe an overused term. But what do you see in your business with like what, what are examples when I say micromanaging? What, 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 do, what do people really mean by that? As far I think, as, yeah, yeah, that is a great question. I think they mean being not having the ability to make decisions on their own in their role. So not being able to take control of the actual position and responsibility that they have been given. And it is very, very hard on a leadership stand, uh, standpoint. Um, again, I've been in a management role and now in a, in a CEO ownership role. And it is hard because as a leader, we want to make sure things are done right. We want to make sure they're done properly. We want to do all the things to ensure that it goes exactly as we would do it in that role. But I think it's up to us as leaders to empower our team to have the ability to follow through with the steps that they are given and have confidence that it's going to be done correctly. And the way that we do that is having the KPIs. The KPIs are our, our solution to that. So um, when somebody says they don't want to be micromanaged, for me, that seems that sounds like they want to be able to do their job independently and successfully without me telling them, oh, change this, change that, do all these things. Granted, there's training, you know, training that has to take place, but sure. they don't, you know, the micromanagement piece of it is not necessarily tied to the KPIs. I think that um, when you initially want to launch KPIs in a company that doesn't have them, I think that you initially get a little bit of a fear like, oh, they're micromanaging me. No, micromanagement is um, not empowering you to do your job. What I'm doing is just 
tracking the results of your position. And again, start with just the tracking piece. I, I don't need to, to make sure that you're hitting X, Y, and Z just yet. Now we're going to see where are we at, and then we're going to set goals to increase and improve over time. Lori, so much. I'm j jotting down notes. <laughs> I love that. Great information. I really appreciate you uh, okay. stopping in and, and to get to know you a little bit better. I think your, your company is providing a valuable service. How can, if someone's listening, they either want to learn more about becoming an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, that's a hard word for me to say. I know it is a hard one. <laughs> learn or learn a little bit more about what you do and how your team may be able to support them. How do they reach you? They can uh, reach me there. I am on every social media. So um, Facebook, Instagram, if you look up simplified HRCO, that is the um, Facebook and Instagram link. And then my email is just Lori, which is L O R I at simplified HRCO.com. I would love the opportunity to chat with anybody who one needs HR support or two, just, you know, a fellow entrepreneur to, to have conversations with. I think that building our network and having a support system of other people that experience the same struggles that we do every day is super critical to success. So I love to help build other people up. And, and I know that other people do the same for me. Thanks again, Lori. And if you want to know more about Grow Your Occupancy, we're here at growyourocupancy.com. Hit the subscribe button, share the podcast uh, for others that you feel would uh, gain from this conversation and others that we have on a weekly basis. Thanks so much again, Lori. And we'll talk to you all again very soon. Thank you for having me.